At launch, Diablo 4 offers five unique classes, the Barbarian, the Druid, the Necromancer, the Rogue, and the Sorcerer. While every class is different, they all have one thing in common. They are excellent at slaying hordes of undead. Let's talk about what each class is good at and bad at so that you know which class to play and which class to avoid for your preferred playstyle. Let's dive straight in. First, the Necromancer. The Necromancer turned out to be everything I wanted it to be. It's an undead army summoning, bone spear chucking, corpse exploding master of the dead. The Necromancer is the only class that can equip a scythe and it looks good doing it. The Necromancer will use two different types of resources. The first is going to be your Essence. This will automatically regenerate at all times. You'll use this to fire off your powerful abilities. The second resource is Corpses. Yes, you heard that right. You'll need to make sure you're creating enough Corpses to summon your army or to explode for massive damage with Corpse Explosion. Fortunately, the Necromancer has a few different passives that allow it to create Corpses even when nothing is dying. Very handy in long boss fights where the boss keeps killing your minions while refusing to die. As a Necromancer, it will be important important for you to manage both of these resources. The Necromancer can lean into four different build archetypes. The first is Bone, which will deal immediate damage while consuming a significant amount of your essence. The second will be Darkness, which will focus on dots and corpse creation. The third is Blood, which will deal damage or heal you, and oftentimes both at the same time. And last but not least, you can focus on building an absolutely massive army of the dead. And that brings us to the class system. Have you ever felt sad or lonely or sad and lonely? We're ARPG players. Players. Of course we have. Well, fear not. As a necromancer, you can raise as many undead friends from the ground as your heart desires. The Necromancer's class system is Book of the Dead. This allows you to spec in or out of passives for your undead army, passives that allow you to summon more of them or simply do more damage. The Book of the Dead contains three different sections, one for each type of minion the Necromancer has. These include Skeletal Warriors, Skeletal Mages, and a Golem. You can choose passives from the book that buff your army, or you can take passives that forego the undead army altogether and instead buff your character directly. So if you wanted to be a Necro without an undead army, that's totally possible, but if that's something you want to do, I need to know who hurt you. I'm kidding, you do you. The first thing you'll unlock are your basic skills. Since your essence regenerates constantly, you don't have to cast these abilities in the same way that some other classes do, but they are great for dealing damage while you regenerate your resources or even applying debuffs like vulnerability. Also, some of them will even help to accelerate your essence regeneration if that's something you're keen on. The first ability is called Bone Splinters and it fires three splinters at enemies in front of you. The next is Hemorrhage, which has a 20% chance to form a blood orb. Now, blood orbs are pretty interesting because they are unique to necros and basically act as a health potion that falls onto the ground and is automatically consumed when you walk over it. Necros are the only class to get a class unique health globe. Everyone else needs to use skills or potions to heal. Choosing a class to play in Diablo 4 can be difficult, but choosing a game to play on the go doesn't need to be. Try Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video. Every great game has some serious challenges waiting near the end. Well, in Raid, that end game is Doom Tower. This huge tower is basically a giant prison. The Arbiter fought back a pack of really nasty bad guys a long time ago, but she wasn't strong enough to take them out for good. So instead, she locked them up in this massive tower until she was able to figure out what to do with them. That's where we come in. To climb to the top, you're gonna need an army of champions. The regular Doom Tower floors tend to be pretty easy to deal with if you've got a strong team, but the bosses are really tough, and you'll need some serious specialists if you're going to beat them. Call of Arbiter being new this month, Raid Shadow Legends itself is getting updated with loads of new content related to the limited series. We're talking new champions, a new artifact set, events, and more. This month, Raid is going on an Easter hunt, but we're not hunting for normal eggs, we're hunting for dragon eggs. Download Raid using the links below, copy your in-game player ID, and then head over to egghunt.polarium.com from April 14th to May 15th. Enter your player ID and then journey through the flaming portal to embark on an exciting AR adventure. Scour the dragon's lair using your phone, and if you find a hidden egg, you'll be in for a chance to win in-game items and real-life prizes, ranging from a legendary Raid champion to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. This event is for new players, but existing raid players can join in on the excellent fun as well. Go to egghunt.polarium.com and you'll find a special promo code that everyone can use to earn a small gift in game. If you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan the QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking epic champion knight errant from the banner lords faction and other useful things. Energy refills, skill tome, XP booster. Hit my link in the description below and I'll see you on the battlefield. Thanks for listening and now let's get back to the video. Reap sweeps your scythe in front of you and is great for generating 
generating extra essence. Last but not least, we have Decompose, which rips flesh off your enemy, creating corpses for you to use as you wish. The important bit is that this creates corpses. Great for corpse heavy builds or fights where the boss is obliterating your minions, forcing you to constantly resummon them. And Blizzard mentioned that they made minions more fragile, which means you'll be needing more corpses to keep them all standing. So this skill may be essential for some minion builds. Next, the Necro unlocks its core skills. That essence you've been regenerating? Yeah, you'll spend it to deliver these essence attacks. The first is going to be Bone Spear, which sends a spear flying at your target and decimates everything behind it. This skill is so satisfying. Next, you'll have Blood Lance, which will throw a Blood Lance at enemies, dealing a bit of damage. Blood Surge will draw blood from the enemies before expelling a Nova of blood toward your enemies, dealing massive damage. Take note of the fact that as with other blood abilities, you can unlock passives that cause this ability to heal you when you use it. Blood abilities are often the great source of healing for the Necro. Next, we have Blight, which does a bit of damage before leaving a defiled area on the ground that deals damage over time. Finally, Sever creates a specter of you that charges forward and attacks with its scythe. Now, there's a great passive in the core combat ability section to take note of. It's called Hued Flesh, and it gives you a chance to create corpses anytime you damage your enemy. This is incredibly useful, if not essential, for corpse explosion or any undead army build. Don't ignore this one. Next, you'll unlock your corpse and macabre skills. These are great for manipulating the dead and controlling the battlefield. The first skill, and my favorite, corpse explosion, basically allows you to detonate corpses on the ground for absolutely insane damage. <sighs> Next, we have Blood Mist, which causes you to disperse into a bloody mist, allowing you to be immune to damage for a few seconds. While in mist form, you will also damage enemies near you, and since this is a blood skill, it will also heal you. Nice. Then there's Bone Prison, which will imprison your enemies in a jail made of bones. What you do with them when they're in there, that's up to you. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Next, we'll unlock our curse skills, which will afflict debilitating effects on your foes. As of right now, there are only two curses. Iron Maiden curses the area, causing enemies to take damage every time they attack you or your army of the dead. Think Thorns. Decrepify curses the area, slowing enemies by 40% and causing them to do 20% less damage. Iron Maiden felt great on Thorns builds if you go that route, whereas Decrepify just didn't feel as effective in the one area I needed needed it to feel effective at, which was bosses. Bosses still ran at me with what felt like full speed. I needed to test it more to be sure. Next, the Necro unlocks summon skills. Corpse Tendril causes veins to burst out of a corpse, pulling in nearby enemies and stunning them for three seconds. This is great for grouping up enemies so that you can knock them all down. Bone Spirit is really unique. It consumes all of your essence to conjure a spirit of bone that seeks out enemies, dealing an absolutely massive explosion on impact. The more essence you have when you cast this, the more damage it's going to do. You have to be conscious of how how and when you use this ability since it will literally drain 100% of your resource upon being cast. But if you follow it up with, say, Corpse Explosion while having the passive that makes Corpse Explosion give you essence back every time you use it, it's not a problem at all. Next, you'll unlock your ultimates. These have long cooldowns of about a minute, give or take, depending on the skill. And you can only slot one of these at a time. The first ultimate is Bone Storm, which causes a swirling storm of bones to appear around you and your golem, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. This one can feel pretty good, especially once you've got your golem unlocked. Then there's Army of the Dead. This one has an insanely long cooldown, but it calls forth the deep buried dead who crawl from the ground and explode. It's pretty effective, but that cooldown is just really, really long at 90 seconds. Finally, there's Blood Wave, which conjures a tidal wave of blood that deals massive damage and knocks back your enemies. Early on, don't feel bad about not using these ultimates. With other skills like Bone Spear and Corpse Explosion being so much more effective and without having massive cooldowns, it's pretty easy to lean on those skills instead. The Necromancer is going to be a lot of fun and will contain a lot of build options within it. If you're keen on playing the Necromancer, definitely check out one of my Necromancer guides in the description down below. Next up, we've got the Sorcerer. And remember, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to sub for more Diablo content. Sorcerers are all about that elemental damage. Do you like setting things on fire? Do you like chilling things to the bone? Did you stick silverware in electrical sockets as a child? then the Sorcerer might be perfect for you because those are the three elemental archetypes you can lean into. As with previous entries in the franchise, the Sorcerer will use mana to fire off abilities, and much like the Necro's essence, mana will constantly regenerate whether or not you are in combat. In fact, all of the range class's resources naturally regenerate, while the melee classes do not. Now, the Sorcerers have one of the coolest class systems out of any class. Essentially, every skill in the Sorcerer kit comes with a unique passive when slotted as an enchantment. Some of these can cause meteors to fall from the sky, some of them can cause 
cause enemies to explode when they die. As of right now, the system is, in my opinion, the most interesting class system in the game, as it can completely change how a build plays and feels. Hardcore players definitely take note that Flame Shield can be slotted as an enchantment for a free death, which is going to be insanely powerful in hardcore content, essentially working like a free death passive from Diablo 3, where if you die, you're instead taken to low health and made immune to damage for a few seconds, so you can recover and get away to safety. It does have a two minute cooldown, so don't die twice in a row. Other classes don't presently get a free death passive, so this is incredibly powerful, maybe even too powerful. Free death passives should probably be on all classes or none. That's my gut reaction in terms of balancing hardcore, but we'll see how that plays out. The Sorcerer has four basic abilities. Once again, these are your abilities that don't cost any mana and don't have cooldowns. Besides being great for supplementing your damage while waiting for more mana, they are great for applying elemental status effects. Frostbolt is of course cold damage and will chill enemies for 15%. Repeatedly chilling enemies will eventually put them into a frozen state, at which point they can't attack or move. Firebolt hurls flaming bolts at the enemy, dealing damage and placing a burning dot on them for eight seconds. Spark launches a bolt of lightning that shocks an enemy four times. Arclash shocks enemies in front of you, and then every 10 times that Arclash swipes, it'll stun all of the enemies that it hit for two seconds. Next, you'll unlock your core skills, of which the Sorcerer has six. These will be what you're using your mana to fire off, and these will likely be responsible for most of your damage, especially early on. Ice Shards launches five shards that deal 25% increased damage to frozen enemies, so this pairs really well with builds that are trying to freeze enemies. Frozen Orb is a classic Diablo ability that unleashes an orb that chills enemies for 34% while shooting out frozen projectiles. Then there's Fireball, which hurls an exploding ball of fire that does massive AoE damage to all enemies near its target. Then you've got Incinerate, which channels a beam of fire burning enemies. And the cool thing about this is the damage ramps up the longer that you channel the beam. Charge Bolts releases five bolts of lightning that course along the ground in an erratic pattern. And then finally, Chain Lightning unleashes a stream of lightning that chains between nearby enemies up to four times. All of these abilities felt so great, but my favorite was Fireball. It was so satisfying to delete large packs of mobs with that skill. But of course, any of these abilities can be made to feel amazing, especially once you get those legendary aspects rolling in. Next, you'll unlock your defensive skills. The Sorcerer gets four defensive skills that you can choose to take advantage of. Ice Armor creates a barrier around you for six seconds that will absorb up to 30% of your total health and damage. On top of that, if you deal cold damage, it adds to the barrier, allowing it to absorb more damage. The next cold defensive ability is Frost Nova. This releases a ring of frost from you, freezing all enemies around you for two seconds. This skill was crazy satisfying and is one of the best crowd control abilities in the entire game. Flame Shield will engulf you in flames for two seconds, burning nearby enemies. While Flame Shield is active, you are immune, which means you can't take damage and all the status effects that were on you are removed. This skill is also the one that gives you that free death if you slot it as an enchantment in the class system. So this is a really important skill for the Sorcerer. Teleport is the final defensive ability and it does exactly that. You teleport from one place to the next. If you've played Sorcerer in D2, it's worth noting that this skill now has a roughly 11 second cooldown, so you won't be blitzing across the map with it like you used to. Next, you'll unlock your Conjuration abilities. The first is Lightning Spear, which is a crackling spear of light that seeks out and attacks enemies for six seconds. It's a really satisfying ability. Ice Blades conjures blades of ice for six seconds that rapidly slash enemies with a 20% chance of making them vulnerable. And remember, vulnerable means that the enemy will take 20% more damage, which makes it a very desirable debuff. Fortunately, there's usually a few different ways to get vulnerable, so you aren't ever stuck using any one skill. Last but not least, we've got Hydra, which summons a three-headed Hydra for eight seconds. Each head shoots fireballs at nearby enemies. This skill is actually crazy powerful. In a pinch, you can slam it down and just kite the enemies until they are dead, and it absolutely wrecks. Next, you'll unlock your mastery skills, which are your big spenders. These will do massive AoE damage, but will also consume close to half of your mana in a single cast. First up, we've got Blizzard, which will summon a fridge blizzard that deals damage and continuously chills enemies for 18 percent over six seconds great for freeze builds or cold builds next you've got meteor which will summon a meteor that strikes the target location dealing massive damage and placing a burning dot on the ground for three seconds then you've got firewall which will create a wall of flames that burns enemies over eight seconds yeah, it's a wall of fire. It's great if you can get the enemy to stand in it, less so if you can't. Last, you've got ball lightning that basically creates a ball of lightning that slowly moves forward, continually zapping your enemies. These mastery skills are really big and hit really hard, but they come at a massive cost, so use them wisely. Next, you'll get your sorcerer ultimates. These have really long cooldowns and you can only equip one of them at a time. The sorcerer definitely has one of the coolest looking ultimates in the game, locking down those bragging rights with a skill called deep freeze. This skill will encase yourself 
yourself in ice, which makes you immune to damage for four seconds while continuously chilling all the enemies around you for 20%. And when it ends, frozen enemies will shatter for massive damage, creating a nice chain effect. The second ultimate is Inferno, which creates a giant snake made out of fire that burns enemies in a huge area before exploding for more damage. This is basically a massive fire dot and then a little bit of an explosion. And finally, Unstable Current, which makes it so that whenever you cast a lightning skill, another random non-basic lightning skill is also cast. This lasts for 10 seconds. In summary, the Sorcerer is a master of elemental damage, burn, freeze, and electrocute enemies to death with this highly mobile glass cannon, except the Sorcerer didn't feel like glass at all. Thanks to its multiple different barriers and damage mitigation abilities, it was tanky as hell. Fitting, since that's exactly where we're heading. The Druid is the big, beefy, shape-shifting class. It's simultaneously the jacked bully that used to take your lunch and the kid that couldn't walk one full lap around the field in PE class. You can lean into shape-shifting or you can lean into dealing elemental damage, or you can go hybrid and be a shape-shifting elementalist. Just be careful. Everybody knows you never go full hybrid. Everybody knows you never go full hybrid. But all jokes aside, hybrid actually feels great on this class. So live your best shapeshifting elemental life if you want to. The Druid has a class system that revolves around choosing between different spirit animals to ultimately unlock boons or buffs that they possess. Once you meet those level requirements, you'll receive a quest to go out and kill monsters and collect boons to unlock all these passives. Then you can pick and choose the passives that are right for the build you want to make. The first skills you'll unlock are your basic skills, which include two shapeshifting abilities and three elemental abilities, just like the Barbarian you will need to use your basic skills to generate your resource. In this case, it's known as spirit. Doing so will give you the spirit needed to cast your core abilities. Your spirit will not naturally generate if you are not attacking something with your basic skills. But don't worry, there are some passives that greatly help with resource regeneration down the road. The first transformation skill, Maul, shapeshifts you into a werebear while mauling an enemy with your fists or paws. Shred shapeshifts you into a werewolf to shred the enemy with a chance to shred them twice. Then there's Storm Strike, which is your first elemental ability, causing lightning to gather around your weapon and then deal damage to the target and up to three nearby enemies. So this basically gives your like basic attack a nice little cleave. Earth Spike causes a spike of rock to burst forth from the ground and impale your enemies. This is a nice little ranged basic attack. Finally, there's Wind Shear, which conjures a piercing blade of wind, dealing damage and increasing your move speed by 5% stacking all the way up to 30. This is great for melee shapeshifting builds that are going to focus on beating things to death. Next, you'll unlock your core skills, which will be your spirit spenders and will be responsible for dealing a ton of your damage. First up, pulverize, which will cause you to turn into a werebear and slam the ground, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. The best part about this ability is that it constantly counts up to 10 when you're not using it. And if you let it count all the way to 10 before using it again, it does massive damage. I found it very much worth saving up to the 10th charge before casting this, as it usually killed everything around me. Then there's Landslide, which crushes the enemies between three pillars of earth, dealing huge damage. This skill can feel really good for single target damage, but without legendaries, it feels pretty underwhelming as a screen clear ability. Finally, we have Tornado, which conjures a tornado that moves around in random directions. Thanks to that randomness, it can feel really good or sometimes really bad. Next, you'll unlock your defensive skills. The first one is Cyclone Armor, which will summon powerful winds to protect you, granting reduced damage from ranged enemies and knocking back melee enemies. Then there's Earthen Bulwark, which surrounds you in rock for three seconds, absorbing damage until it expires and the rock shatters, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. This one felt really good in conjunction with the get close playstyle of the Druid running into the pack of enemies. It absorbs the damage and then it explodes, hurting them all. And it does pretty significant damage when it explodes. Then you have the shapeshifting defensive skills, Trample. This will cause you to turn into a werebear and deal damage and stun the enemies you hit. This is nice for preventing you from getting backed into a corner and surrounded, which is one of the worst ways to die in Diablo. Debilitating Roar causes you to turn into a werebear and roar, reducing enemy attack speed by 22% for five seconds. And finally, Rabies will cause you to shapeshift into a werewolf and bite your enemy, dealing damage and healing you at the same time. Next, you'll unlock your Wrath abilities. The first is Boulder, which causes your character to yeet a boulder at your enemies, knocking them back and crushing them. This does great damage, but can also be guilty of spreading your enemies out and pushing them away from you, which oftentimes doesn't feel great. But damn, it looks cool. Then there's Hurricane, which forms a hurricane around you that deals damage to nearby enemies for eight seconds. Next, the Druid will unlock Companions. The Necro isn't the only class that can summon new best friends on command. Druid can also choose between three different companion types or choose to have all three out at 
the same time and become sort of a minion master himself. The first is wolves, which summons two wolves to fight by your side. The second is poison creeper, which summons a vine that periodically emerges from the ground and poisons the enemies near you. And then lastly, you have the ravens that fly above you and periodically peck at enemies nearby. This one is especially awesome as you can reactivate it to deal massive AOE damage around your character while simultaneously inflicting vulnerability to all the enemies it hits, causing them to take 20% extra damage for six seconds. It's really nice to use this ability right before you use your pulverize, which is that massive AOE ground slam. So you get everything weakened up and then boom, you pop them all. It's worth noting that once you put this skill on your bar, these companions are out and active all the time. Finally, you're going to unlock your ultimates, which will have massive cooldowns ranging from 50 to 90 seconds, but also dealing massive damage. The first is Cataclysm, which summons a massive storm that follows you around for 10 seconds. Tornadoes knock back enemies while lightning strikes randomly for big damage. Grizzly Rage, which will cause you to shapeshift into a werebear for five seconds, giving you new werebear skills and causing you to generate spirit 28% faster. And then finally, there's Petrify, which will petrify all nearby enemies, stunning them for five seconds. If you damage these enemies, they will break the sun and deal additional damage to the enemy. The Druid is a big, thick bruiser with an elemental side. Definitely a lot of fun. As always, I have a Druid guide linked in the description for anyone keen on trying it. Next, we have the Barbarian, one of the most classic classes in Diablo. A staple of the game since Diablo 2, veterans will be very familiar with the Barbarian if they've played it in previous entries. It is the melee class. It gets passive 10% damage mitigation to aid it in its quest to stay close to its enemies. Barbarians can go for whirlwind builds, bleed builds, blunt force trauma builds, lots of options. The Barbarian's class system is called the Arsenal System. The Barbarian unlocks this system at level 5 and allows the Barbarian to level up their proficiency with each type of weapon. For instance, you might like the passives that are unlocked as you level up a polearm. If that were the case, you would be sure to equip a polearm and kill things with it to level up your proficiency with the polearm, which would then ultimately unlock all those juicy passives that were attached to that weapon type. Barbarians hold the title of being the only class to be able to equip four different weapons at the same time. This means they can also benefit from having four different legendary aspects from their weapon slots, which is more than any other class. This might also result in your Barbarian feeling a little weak in the early game until you get those legendary aspects all rolling because the Barbarian's been balanced for the end game. Two weapon slots are devoted to two different two-handed weapons like pole arms, axes, maces, and great sword. The other two weapon slots are devoted to dual wielding different one-handed weapons like sword, axe, or mace. And don't worry, you don't need to manually choose which weapon you have out at any given moment as the game will automatically have the Barbarian use the weapon that is best suited for that skill. Like the Druid, the first basic ability you choose is quite important because you'll be using it a lot to generate fury. Barb and Druid are the only two classes that don't passively generate their primary resource. Anytime the Barbarian is not attacking something with one of his basic abilities, his fury bubble slowly depletes. Fury is the resource the Barbarian spends to fire off their core abilities or their primary damage abilities. As for the basic abilities, the Barbarian has four. The first one is Lunging Strike, which is fantastic for chasing down loot goblins. Once you lock onto them with this ability, it automatically tracks them until they are dead. And let me tell you, it feels amazing. Bash bashes your enemy with your weapon, dealing damage and eventually stunning them. If you're using a two-handed weapon, it stuns them even longer. Frenzy unleashes a rapid flurry of blows while increasing your attack speed. Play damages the enemy and then applies a bleed dot. Solid choice if you want to go for a bleed build. After that, you'll unlock your core abilities. The one you choose is going to have a massive impact on your barbarian's play style. Whirlwind causes your character to spin and kill everything around it. If you enjoy spin to win builds, you will love a Barbarian Whirlwind build. I've got a link to one down in the description below. Double Swing will slash the enemy directly in front of you. Upheaval is a much slower ability that leaves you vulnerable while you cast it, but hits a massive area in front of you to reward you for your efforts. This one was hard to use in difficult fights because of how long you had to stand still to use it. You end up taking a lot of damage. Then there's Rend, which slashes the enemies in front of you and applies a massive bleed to them. This is again, perfect for bleed builds. Hammer of the Ancients pulls out a massive hammer and bonks the enemies in front of you. This one can be incredibly satisfying if you're looking for that massive upfront damage. While the Barbarian does need to be generating resources with his basic attacks in order to use these abilities, there are a few passives and abilities that help keep the Fury coming in. Taking advantage of those abilities and those passives will give you really good uptimes on your Fury. Next thing the Barbarian unlocks are going to be his defensive skills. He's got Iron Skin, which reduces the damage he takes, Ground Stomp to stun the enemies around him. Then there's Rallying Cry 
Cry, which is really notable because this makes you unstoppable. Every class has an unstoppable ability. This is going to be your break free ability when you get stunned and crowd controlled. And in Diablo 4, these stuns and these crowd controls are really long, like four, five, six seconds, right? That's a long time. You will be dead a lot of times if you're stuck and stunned in the middle of the chaos for that long. So that's when you would fire off your rallying cry to break you free from that stun. Challenging shout taunts enemies and grants you 40% damage reduction for eight seconds afterwards. This is the closest thing to a tank ability in Diablo 4. Then you've got your brawling skills. Warcry buffs you and your allies damage. Leap lets you well leap from one place to the next. Great for getting out of a corner or, you know, if you're getting surrounded. Kick knocks enemies back. This is Sparta! <laughs> Yep, kind of like that. And charge causes you to become unstoppable and rush forward, pushing enemies with you. This can be good for grouping enemies up or keeping yourself from getting surrounded. Next, you'll unlock your weapon mastery skills. Rupture is used to detonate all remaining bleed damage on the enemies. So you'll stack a bunch of bleeds with your other abilities, and then you'll use this ability to cause all of that bleed damage to fire off simultaneously while removing the bleed dots from the enemy. Death blow will instantly kill enemies below a certain health threshold. And its cooldown is reset every time you kill an enemy. So you can get back-to-back -back kills with this for big damage. Steel Grasp throws out a trio of change that damages and pulls in enemies. Great for crowd controlling enemies. Great for grouping them up. Finally, you've got the Barbarian's ultimate abilities. You can only equip one ultimate ability at a time. They generally do big damage and have long cooldowns. Wrath of the Berserker is the simplest and most straightforward. It simply buffs your character, giving you the berserking and unstoppable buffs for five seconds. In layman's terms, that means that you're going to do more damage and you can't be crowd controlled for those five seconds. Iron Maelstrom is a massive damage attack that happens in three phases. Phases. Each time you trigger it, it's going to use a different type of weapon that you're holding. Basically, you're going to fire it off three times in a row for three different types of big damage. The last Barbarian Ultimate is Call of the Ancients, which will, well, call the Ancients to fight by your side. Three Ancients will slam into the fight, damaging and crowd controlling the enemies that they attack. In summary, the Barbarian is going to be the melee warrior type class. Its abilities and its passives are built to allow it to not only survive, but thrive in the thick of battle. You stay close to build up fury and you get closer to spend it. No magic, no free else just smash last but not least we have the rogue the rogue can be built a couple of different ways. You can either build into being a ranged archer like Legolas, or you can build into a melee centric dual wield assassin type of class. You can also go hybrid and do a little bit of each. The rogue can complement whichever path you take by throwing out traps, grenades, and crowd control abilities to keep the enemies on their heels. They have fast, flashy attacks, great mobility, and of course, fantastic damage, but rogues will need to make sure they avoid damage when possible as they don't have the tankiness of the barbarian. Rogues have three different weapon slots. One slot is dedicated to their bow and the other two weapon slots are dedicated to their dual wield weapons. Like the barb, the rogue will automatically use weapons that are appropriate for the skill that you're firing off. The rogue's unique class system is that it can choose between three different class stances. Combo points were my favorite as it allowed the rogue to gain up to three charges, which would then be consumed by the next core ability you fired off to do big damage. It's very much a prepare and then devastate kind of rhythm. Then there's intersight, which marks a random enemy on your screen and attacking this enemy fills a gauge that windfall allows you to use your abilities for free for four seconds my experience with this ability was that the four second window often came at inopportune times when i was doing boss battle mechanics or dodging damage or maybe the boss went out of line of sight and now i was spending those four seconds moving instead of attacking and ultimately it was pretty difficult to take advantage of this in a lot of situations also constantly looking for and attacking the random enemy it chose didn't always line up with what you really wanted to be attacking however in single target boss fights you could switch over to this system for pretty solid results. And then there's the final stance, which is preparation, which reduces cooldowns. This probably won't feel great early on when you don't have a lot of legendary aspects buffing your ultimate, but later, if you build towards your ultimate damage, reducing the long cooldown on your ultimate could feel amazing. The first skills you unlock will, of course, be your basic skills. Unlike the barb, the rogue resource gauge is always filling whether or not the rogue is attacking anything. The rogue does not need to use its basic skill to generate resources. Instead, your basic abilities are used to supplement your damage and resource regeneration while waiting for your resource gauge to be full enough to unleash your core abilities. These basic attacks are also great for applying buffs and debuffs to yourself and your enemies. These abilities include three dual wield abilities and two bow abilities. So right away, you'll have to start choosing between melee and 
and ranged. Blade Shift quickly stabs and allows you to move through enemies for three seconds. Invigorating Strike is a melee attack that increases energy regeneration. Puncture throws blades at enemies, slowing them. Heart Seeker is a basic bow ability that seeks out your enemy so it always finds its target. And then Forceful Arrow is a basic bow ability that is great for applying the vulnerable status effect to enemies, which is the one that makes you do 20% more damage to them. Next, you'll unlock your core skills. These are your resource spenders. These are responsible for a massive amount of damage, so choose wisely. There are three bow abilities and two dual wield abilities to choose from. Barrage is a bow ability that unleashes five arrows that expand outward with a chance to ricochet off enemies that they hit. If you've played other ARPGs, this works a lot like multi-shot. I'm on Burgundy? Penetrating Shot is what it sounds like. It's a bow ability that penetrates enemies. At first, it will only be a single arrow firing in a straight line through your enemies, but you can obtain legendaries that cause that arrow to fire perpendicularly from every enemy it hits. And that's something you're going to notice about a lot of the core abilities that are on these classes. You might try them early on without any legendaries attached to them, and they might feel really underwhelming. Whereas once you finally get legendaries attached to them, they'll feel amazing. Some core abilities definitely perform better without legendaries than others, so it's okay to choose one that feels good early on and switch over to another when you get a legendary for it later on. Next is rapid fire. It's pretty self-explanatory. You'll rapidly fire five arrows at the enemy. Typically, this is great for high single target damage at range, but it does leave you vulnerable to attacks as you remain stationary while you fire it off. As for dual wield options, you've got twisting blades, which impel your enemy with your blades, causing them to take increased damage while your blades are left inside of them. Shortly after that, your blades will rip out of the enemy and go back to you and deal even more damage to them. And finally, you've got flurry. This unleashes a flurry of stabs and slashes dealing damage to the enemies in front of you. Next, you'll unlock your agility skills. These are going to focus on your mobility. Shadow Step is going to make you CC immune. That's your CC break. And it's going to let you move through shadows to stab a victim from behind. Dash will cause you to dash forward through your enemies, dealing damage to them on the way through. And then there's Caltrops, which will cause you to leap backwards, throw Caltrops on the ground, which will both damage and slow the enemies that are trying to close in on you. After that, you'll unlock your subterfuge skills, which actually have quite a bit of variety to them. Concealment will cause your character to basically go invis and become unstoppable. Again, CC immunity, very important. You'll stay invisible for four seconds and you can walk around all you want. Next, we have Dark Shroud. No, not that shroud. Dark Shroud, the ability, is a damage mitigation buff that causes you to take less damage. Poison Trap is exactly that. You throw it down and after a little bit of time, it will trigger when the enemy walks near it, applying a massive poison dot to them. Finally, you have Smoke Grenade, which stuns the enemies for four seconds. This can be great when paired with buffs that increase your damage to crowd controlled enemies. Next, we unlock something that's pretty unique to the rogue. It's imbuement skills. Essentially, you can activate this to apply an imbuement to your weapon for additional effects when you're using your other abilities. This imbuement only lasts for two abilities, so you'll want to save it until right before you fire off your big damage core abilities. There are three different imbuement types. Poison imbuements will imbue your weapons with lethal poison, causing your skills to deal poison damage and apply a poison dot. Old imbuement imbues your weapon with frigid energies. Your skills will deal cold damage and chill enemies up to 50%. If you chill an enemy enough, it'll be frozen pretty straightforward. The next one's really interesting. Shadow Imbuement imbues your weapons with a festering shadow. This causes your skills to deal shadow damage and infect enemies, causing them to explode on death. For this reason, Shadow Imbuement was my personal favorite while playing the rogue. It causes a massive chain reaction of explosions that just felt so satisfying. Finally, you'll unlock your ultimates, of which you can only slot one. Once again, you'll have three ultimates to choose from. Shadow Clone will create a shadow that mimics your actions for 15 seconds and does 60% of your damage. Rain of Arrows will rain down arrows, dealing massive damage to all enemies in a large area at and beyond where you cast it. Then there is Death Trap, which is a trap that you throw down and does massive damage to the enemies that get close enough to activate it. At first, like with most classes, these ultimates can feel a bit underwhelming, but with some investment in the long run, they're going to be incredibly strong. Rogue is going to be fast and hit hard, but will definitely need to remain more conscious of the fact that its mobility comes at the cost of its durability. You can go bow or dual wield or a hybrid of the two while choosing between three different stances that will alter how you play your character. If you like fast, zippy characters, or if you miss the bow is on, this is the class for you. So which class are you going to play? Let me know down in the comments below. I know this video got really long. I'm sorry about that, but there was just so much to cover. As I mentioned, there are links to the class guides in the description. If you're looking to understand any of these classes better, if you made it this far, consider doing me a huge solid and giving the video a thumbs up and leaving a comment for those algorithm gods, and maybe even subscribe if you want to see more Diablo content. 
massive shout out to my YouTube members. Thanks for supporting in a big way that you do. If you want to become a YouTube member for perks like behind the scenes footage, special Discord access, and more, click the join button below for more info. Thanks for watching. And if you don't know what to do next, maybe check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now.